you can share something you talked about in your breakout rooms or just one thing I'm taking away from our time together tonight is, is a potential prompt or anything that you want to share. We'd just love to hear from you. Please unmute yourselves. Robert? Um, uh, another thing to your Lincoln thing, he also did the long walk by Kit Carson. He sent Kit Carson out to round up a bunch of Indians to move them to a different place. So he also uh, did something against the Indian uh, community, mm -hmm. the I, Native American community. I, I've so grown up with this right, problem. A lot Sorry. of years of conditioning. No, thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a great, yeah. great example. Thank you for sharing that. Jen, you had a comment? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jen. I, Oh, no, go ahead, Jen. No, oh, okay. Uh, I, I was, what I learned tonight was that there are, well, at least two issues, but I didn't realize the breadth of the, the issue in education. And I was thinking that we'd talk more about um, equity here, you know, like, you know, equitable education and all of that. But what you helped open my eyes to, Laura, is the bias that we also teach in schools. So it's not just about inequity, to people of color, but it's about the garbage that and propaganda that is taught to everybody. That and and it's it, those are two big things. And Laura, I hope before we end tonight, you talk about the business model that you have because there's no donate button on your website. I'm really really interested to hear how you fund what you do. Thank you. Yeah, we just need to fix the donate button. Yeah. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm just. Uh, absolutely appalled to think that Texas, with my brother living down there, he's told me how ignorant so many of the people are, that Texas chooses, I mean, because of, I can't remember what it was that, that Sydney said, but Texas is our textbook, our source for textbooks, mm -hmm. unless somebody challenges it like they have to, like they did in California. That, that really is appalling to think that a state that's so far behind then, yeah. Market share is what I said. It's because Market they have share. money that they influence the publishers. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just that's just very disappointing to me. It's been like that for eons. Yep. Yep. One more one more piece of my ignorance that I'm. I yeah. I remember when I was teaching in high school and questioning something in the textbook. Mm -hmm. and they said, well. It's the it's it's the market. It's it's what they they appeal to because Texas is a large state and they they sell a lot of books and so that's that's what it's all about. I had the state board and it controls so much and just how elected it is. So mm -hmm. yep. and as Jackie just pointed out in chat, it's just an excuse. It's an excuse. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. There's one other thing about textbooks. Um, in some school districts, uh, textbooks are expensive, no matter, and, you know, math, science are even more expensive, but um, the ages of some of the textbooks is appalling. So that's another thing to where Ooh. it's where yeah. it cross purposes as to what we need to do. And I, I bet that there's still schools that do like, I mean, I had uh, a black coworker that I, that I worked with for years in Maryland. And she talked about the fact that when she went to go to nursing school, she found out that she'd been studying from books that were 30 or 40 years old. She'd gotten the hand down books. Their school had gotten the hand down books from the, from the white school in town. Mm -hmm. And so she had such an inferior education that they didn't let her into the nursing program. Oh. And that, that's a perfect example of like the fact that we don't tell our history, we repeat it, right? I mean, that's the exact same story I'm reading about in Mildred D. Taylor's story of the Logan family, you know, and the kids are getting the hand-me-down books. They're the seventh kids to get them. It's still happening today. But because we, we don't tell the story, we don't interrupt the story and we don't change the story. And what's so sad about that, Laura, is is textbooks is our 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 archaic anyway. With the electronic and the media and the internet at our fingertips, we can be we can be teaching with current events. We could be teaching with live things all the time and not have very expensive printed books. 
Which raises the issue that's been highlighted by the new administration, which is access to the internet. Right. What? Rural, rural and poor Ex areas. They don't right. have it. So there, there's another inequity that is perpetuating all the problems we already have. Exactly. The access yeah, to the internet, it, right. When you think of it that way, still, they're still gonna teach from an antiquated system because all they're gonna do is transcribe the, the to someone to e-read it for them. So it's still gonna be the same old textbook uh, until they get someone that's willing to reprint the, the true history and to print it as it is, we're still gonna get the same thing. It doesn't matter if there's access to the internet, if it's, it's just gonna be the same history. So we have to get to a point where we challenge the history and that we challenged uh, the teachers in the classroom to actually be factual because we want our kids to understand that this is this is where we came from and we're still in the same spot. We need to change from where we are now to make something better for the future. I have a question related to that. Um, I've had friends, you know, longtime teachers who've retired early because they couldn't use their own syllabus or what, I, I, that's not the right term, but they're, what they taught from day to day. Uh, they had something imposed on them from, from the district. The, the, the district wanted every teacher to be teaching exactly the same thing at the same time. And, and there was less scope to bring in current events or uh, supplemental texts. So uh, you, even if we can fix textbooks, uh, what role does, does centralized control of what is taught play in the problem. And, and really, we need to have everybody who's involved in education from our teachers to curriculum writers to decision makers being honest about our history. And we need to see, we need everyone to see this is in our common good. It is in the best interest of everybody in the United States that we end the mythology and we have an authentic story because that's something we can contribute to. We can't join a myth. Right? We're not contributing members of a myth. Right? We, we are a people and, and we're people who have a future together if we come together to, to build it. And that means drawing on the talents and gifts of all the people in the United States and being proud that we are the most diverse country in the world and we have the greatest potential in our people. But Lincoln was one of many who said the only thing that will destroy the United States is the people of the United States. And that's where we are now. Right. So we can build it or we can destroy it. Carol made a very uh, interesting point in chat and I'll read it and then unfortunately it's been a fast 90 minutes we need to wrap up. Uh, Carol said, I wonder how easy or hard it is to find out from local school districts what our teachers are using. Jackie, any ideas on how to support teachers who are using effective materials? Uh, Carol, it's easy to find out what school boards and what school districts are using. Most of that information on texts that are being used is public knowledge. And um, I can put in, I'll put in some um, information about that in the summary. I can just uh, add this little bit. Um, if, as long as education is based on test results and the test determine what teachers really try to cover, and then the tests usually have nothing to do with the kind of history or information that needs to be shared in a classroom. Um, we're gonna to continue to have the mess that we have. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully COVID has taught something mm -hmm. to the, the folks who make these tests because at least for the SAT, they're not counting it for the next, I guess, year or so. But those tests don't have, don't cover anything that's pertinent, really. And Jackie, that is an excellent point, and that's a whole other session. Uh, teachers just get furious about tests, and I'm thrilled that the SATs have been put aside for another year because that doesn't define a student at all. Well, Fred, you want to take us home here? Well, we've, uh, I think this has been a really great discussion. Laura, thank yes. you so much. And hope yes. you'll come yes. back. It's just been great. Yeah, just super. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we're going to continue more of this, uh, more next week. And uh, we, we hope you'll 
you'll come back and bring somebody with you. Uh, I, uh, I was very happy to, I met with our new bishop of the Diocese of Oregon yesterday, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and she was thrilled about our conversations. And I see she's been involved in conversations also with Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the church over uh, Asian Americans and what's been going on there. And of course, she is uh, she is Japanese, has a Japanese background, and her her father was in an internment camp in Oregon. So, uh, one of these days, perhaps we'll we'll be able to get her as a guest. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big topic, and it's one that uh, I know that uh, that uh, you all are engaged in. And good job, good work today. Thank you. I'm back. Next week, our topic will be on empowering voters. Mm -hmm. And Greg will lead that session. So that's going to be an awesome session. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Stay well, stay safe. And Laura, thank you. Hang around. For thank us. you, Laura. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.